a way to reward you. Guys, welcome to Cloud Kingdom, where it will be the final site of battle between these two players. And introducing the player at the bottom left, we have from Team FXO. It is Lowly, who is not doing that well in NASL. He's 1-4. 1-4. And, and the only win he's gotten was from Walkover, but... <laughs> A win's a win, Andre, and a win against Alicia sort of. would be very strong, man. Hey, yes, it would. If I beat Alicia, I would tell everybody. If I beat Lowly, I would tell everybody. If you beat Alive, you would tell everybody. I would, but I didn't beat Alive. I lost Alive, and I still told everybody. I'm like, hey guys, check out my game <laughs> against Alive. I lost, but it was a great game. <laughs> anyway, you beat Major. That's what counts. That's right. Top right hand corner, we have uh, Alicia up here who I think has a really well put together build in my opinion, um, or at least a last nine game. Nine pylon, I think it's an awesome. Oh build. my gosh, nine pylon is so intelligent. <laughs> uh, but no, in all seriousness, I think Alicia played an outstanding game last game. Uh, really, really dissected his opponent, understood what to do, and, uh, and punished him. Uh, again, we see sort of an early spawning pool yet again. It's an 11, 11 pool? Yeah, 11 pool. Uh, after the second Overlord, so it's just important to note, it's not super, super duper fast, but it is pretty fast to force a forge first before actually throwing down that Nexus. And again, as we talked about every single game, this is to make sure that he can take his natural and it's not pylon blocked. Yeah, you just squeeze out of four Zerglings and the probe can't do anything. Uh, this, this is Cloud Kingdom, a map that's very choky. A lot of people say that it, it's supposed to separate the Death Fall, but... At the same time, it's it, we're talking about Protoss vs. Zerg here, man. Death Falls is is kind of like the middle name of this matchup. Yeah, it's like point. chokes. I love Infestors. <laughs> I love Sentries. I love Force Fields. <laughs> Let's this go is ahead. An awesome map. Exactly. Uh, this is a map that Alicia chose. Um, Alicia has a, a plethora of two base timings that he hasn't really employed just yet. Kind of been playing two base harass and take a third base into timing pushes. And that's actually kind of interesting because last season we saw Alicia, it just seemed like he was two basing all the time. Mm. And now we see a different form of him, so it's like that's kind of cool. See his evolution of play. Alicia playing it very, very standard. Changing up a little bit, though. We can see the gateway goes down before the second pylon, so he's really stressing something out right now. We're going to see what that is. Getting the faster gateway basically means that you have uh, a faster cybernetics core, but your mineral count slash gas intake will be slightly slightly um, less. Because think, if you get the pylon first, then you're really focusing on getting the maximum amount of probes, and then you get the gateway. But getting the gateway means you have to get the assimilator pretty fast as well. And then that commits more probes a little bit earlier, so you have less gas, you have less minerals, etc. cetera. Will he finish up gas at 430 like he did in game number one? Uh, I feel like Lily's just going to play, again, his, his kind of style of getting speed out early into two-base tech. Yeah. Uh, Cloud Kingdom is a map that's a little bit hard to secure his third because of how windy a path it takes to get there. And also, there's like there's two paths you have to really account for in terms of holding up Protoss pressure. Uh, and that's where Zerking Speed comes in. It's really useful on a map like this. I agree. And you know what? A lot of people will give Lowly a little bit of, of crap about his early, early gas, but I actually like it. It's a very safe and comprehensive way of defending all potential all-ins. Remember, as I was saying, just having that presence on the map disables those proxy pylons from going down. Uh, as regards to this opening from Alicia, I think we're going to see a very fast Stargate yet again, but it's going to even faster than the games that we've seen previous. Uh, just mm. waiting for a Stargate to actually throw down. Yeah, you're right. He's getting at six minutes if he chooses to get it before he'd be... Uh, no, he's actually going to place in the back of his expansion. Sure. Oh, you might be slightly ahead. Oh, I'm, I'm a little bit ahead, Andre. I apologize. It's okay. That. It's cool. But guess what, Andre? I can see into the future. No, no. I say Alicia's going to put it in. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that is amazing, yeah. Ferdinand. <laughs> No, but still, the I'm Stargate sorry. coming out here, I think it's the best possible way to play against <laughs> Lily. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, at Cloud Kingdom, a lot of people always... It's kind of like a mixed bag. Zerg players obviously love it, but people hate the fact that you can keep an Overlord here um, around the cliff. So that's why placing an Overlord, placing any tech at the natural is very risky. The Overlord can just poke out, see it, go back, in, and then see when you're pushing. Unless you want to mind game them, place a Stargate in their vision, make one single unit, and then switch over to gateway units. That's what Huck did against uh, against Suppy at MLG. He actually did a complete fake, 
made like one Phoenix or two, and then dropped seven more gates, and then just pressured with Zealot Sentry Stalker. It was actually kind of cool. Using Vision against her. You can see a little bit of Zealot Stalker pressure over here. Killing two drones, actually. Very surprising. The Stalker will look like it's actually getting out alive. Three drones, and now a, Ze a Zergling. Four drones, excuse me, three Zerglings. No. Shut up, Andre. A lot of units dying. Yeah, so it's more units that should have died. <laughs> That's the, basically the bottom line. Uh, but, you know, Zo Loli has been a big guy, or sorry, a big proponent of droning up on two base before taking the third base. Look, he's already on mid 50s, which is still a pretty healthy drone count by the eight minute mark. It's just that he doesn't have that mineral intake that he's normally accustomed to having. Now he's going to move out and take his expansion again at around the eight to nine minute mark. But at the same time, Alicia is. I guess uh, he, he's he's doing everything else the same exact response. It just feels like both of these guys are saying, I don't care with how the first two games played out. I'm just going to do my build, and I still think I can outplay you. It's a, it's a good measure, too, because both games kind of had similar openings and two different outcomes. Yeah. And to be honest, Stargate play is probably the safest thing that you can possibly do. It defends against a lot of all-ins. It gives you a lot of vision around the map. Yes, you can actually lose out pretty hard if you know you get hard countered, but the fact of the matter is we haven't seen Loli do that just yet. And again, the third base is going to go down nine minutes this time around, a lot faster than the last game. But it will be denied, Froden. And I don't know a way that Loli can actually defend against this. You can see the queens are just so far away. And uh, the Voider is already charged up onto this neck, onto this hatchery. Yeah, uh, the queens that come in can immediately just get lifted as well. Yummy. So, oh, there's two more queens. Another Phoenix joins the fray as well, lifting up the second queen. No transfusers available to the queens just yet. Voider getting low as well. Mr. Bitter is dancing in the background because he loves good uh, Stargate defense as well. And uh, looks like Loli has stabilized very yeah. easily on his third base compared to the other A much games. better defense relative to last games. And look at this, he actually prepares two additional queens to inject for him. That's actually a thing of beauty, but look at the continuation. I love this, Rodan. A ton of ze uh, zealots coming in here. Now what he can do is lift up all the queens and then surround with the zealots while they're actually being lifted up. But Ooh. no, he's actually gonna go for the hatchery. And I like that it's, no, he's going for the Spore Crawlers. The spore I don't mind crawler. that either. He wants to empower the Queens and Zealots get fungled. Wow. Uh -oh. Those Zealots were like, wow, that was not a worth it, man. He's like, you think we should take out the Spore Crawlers? They're like, yeah, they'll never suspect it. And then four infections come out of nowhere. Although wow. this is a great pickoff for Alicia as well. Both players trying to trade extremely efficiently, but it looks like Alicia's getting the slight better end of the deal. Uh, two investors for Zealots is always a huge and these Phoenixes are going to provide such a valuable asset. I mean, already they kill a lot of investors here, but they're going to get a good scout around the field. They're going to see exactly the timings of his opponent, and from there he'll be fine. I like the choice to go the Colossus super early yet again to defend against the large range of his opponent. Of course, Zergling Infestor is going to be the number one thing you have to worry about when you see Infestors on the field already. But oh look at this. Wait. Ventral Sacks There's and more, Pneumatized Andre. Carapace. Rut Rose Shaggy. This is different than the other two games that we've seen. And we're going to see Bailing drop most likely. That or the sickest queen drop you've ever oh seen. Oh, man. man. There's so many queens out in the field. That'd be so fun to just see something like that. Although, you're, you're probably right. It's probably a queen <laughs> drop. Uh, uh, there's the one thing that's really powerful in this scenario as well is that you see Stargate play and you see Alicia going for Colossus directly afterwards. Blink is going to be so far away, and that's how you deal with things like Overlord drops. Although uh, Alicia does have Kansas and Neural Lines to prevent Zerg from run by, you can still do lots of damage everywhere if Alicia's not careful. That's right. And we're going to see, I think Loli actually has the good choice of build, because if Alicia is going to do the same thing as we saw last game, then drop actually allows you to you know, sidestep that force field and be pretty efficient. You can even drop Zerglings. I don't even mind that as much. Uh, and just have those Colossus eat up those single Zerglings. So, you know, it, it just provides your other Zerglings that are running in a little bit more cover. So that's something to also think about. But so far, we don't have a Baneling. No, we do. I'm sorry. Baneling Nest did drop. And we do already have Banelings out. So really, really nice, uh, you know, potential defense coming out here. Alicia not really thinking about going for a two or three base pressure, though. You don't see additional gateways really being added on too early. And we see three probes at a time. Really saturate this base as best as possible. But will we see an attack 
geared up for this fourth phase. Normally, you do try to delay your opponent's fourth phase as, as best as possible. Especially with high, if that's just started as well, pre high timing would be optimal for uh, Alicia. I like I like Loey's double macro hatchery in the main as well. If it's Zergling based army, I mean you're gonna you're gonna your limited resources larva, not necessarily you know minerals and gas. Mm -hmm. um, so just having that excess, especially when you have so many minerals, is never a bad thing. I feel like Stefano is one of those players. He just says whenever he feels like he has too many minerals, just make a hatchery. In this case, Loey's also making several overlords in preparation for the drop, as well as a, a pretty hefty supply block. Loey can just completely devastate the army once. And then after he kills everything, he can just swarm uh, with the remainders of his Zerglings and even maybe some Infested Terrans. That'll be his engagement spot, but with Blink now on the field, I don't know. Does Alicia have the composition? He's got Phoenixes to also poke down some of those Overlords. You know, Alicia might... Uh, well, actually, I think Loli is in a, a much tougher spot. You don't really have Corruptors out in the field, but whoa, 64 Zerglings on the way out. That might actually do it, but it's really going to be how well can Alicia protect these Colossus? What type of positioning can he get? And I love hugging this edge. And Alicia should kind of get a little bit of a tip saying, wow, you didn't actually drone this. I need to be a little bit careful. Yeah. Oh, oh. Well, you have to be very careful. The Overlords are coming in for the drop. The Stalkers blink back. The Infestors do lock down some of the Stalkers with Fungal Growth, oh. and the drops are devastating. A huge pack. All the Sentries almost dying. Only uh, Stalkers and Colossus remaining, but there's oh, still no. lots of Protoss supply. Lowly with counterattack not even fully engaged. The Zerglings got all the way to the Protoss base, but they're not even attacking. He was trying to do it in layers, just taking out the sentries first and then going in for a big swoop in, but there's just not enough stuff. And with so many Colossus out, it's hard to actually engage against this. You need Corruptors if there's this large of a Colossus count. There's no way you can actually deal with this. I don't care how many Infestors you have. These Colossus are just so hardy in this position. And the fourth base going down is so critical. Now, there is a counterattack with a ton of Zerglings coming up here yeah. at the top left oh, hand sitting denying, there for a minute, man. Yeah, denying the fourth base, but really you have to worry about this upcoming attack. And honestly, if I'm a leash in this point, I'm actually going to make a wall of pylons. That way I can actually hide behind there even. And uh, Zerglings won't be nearly as effective because you have just a larger wall. But uh, I really feel like Alicia, he, he has to tread lightly a little bit, but he's in a really complete advantage. Uh, I would even use the ramp against him. That's exactly what he's going to do. Beautiful. He's going to force all the Banelings into one front area, blinking forward to surround the Banelings, making sure their AoE has been minimized. The Protoss army is in the sweet spot. And that is directly at the third of Loli. Queens and Infestors being taken out almost immediately. Loli still doesn't use his Zerglings. In fact, his uh, Zerglings would be better off for a flank right now. GG. <laughs> And a gr as great of a start Loli had, Alicia will take game number three. And uh, it's, it's, it's saddening for me, Andre, because Alicia, I I well played. Great mm -hmm. game, deserved series. Just Loli had so many opportunities, like you said. If he had Corruptors out, if he even had Baneling speed, he didn't even have Baneling yeah. speed, which was like something that he'd been upgrading a long time in the previous two games. He would hit layer, get Baneling speed. It was almost as synonymous as that. I feel like Lily just forget a, a few key components and the battle would have been overwhelmingly his. Also, uh, it's hard to actually judge how many Zerglings there are in that top left-hand corner, but there are 53 over there. Think if you just merge a couple of them into Banelings, you have a ton more Zerglings to actually deal with that army. It's a much different fight. Uh, Loli just forgetting them. That's 25 supply. Could you even imagine not fighting with 25 of your, s or 20 s 26 and a half, technically. The 26 That's what I'm doing, man, Harder Swarm. I feel like, man, I, my army f supply feels so small. And yeah. I look over my base. I have 20 s <laughs> Widow Mines everywhere. I'm like, oh. oh. That's why. <laughs> I'm like, just I actually have factors. no army <laughs> supply. I have like 10 Marauders, 10 Marines, and a few minutes. I'm like, this is not right. I'm maxed out. And I count my SDVs. I still have like 70. I'm like, where's all my supply? And I'm making like 30 Widow Mines. Oh. That game in series was brought to you by Good My PC for a special offer on things like remote access, remote privacy, file transfer, multiple user client management. All these things are more impossible with Good My PC. NASL.tv slash P slash Good My PC. It's right here, on the lower third. When we come back, our second series of the day, as well as a special presentation of a trip that me and Mr. Bitter went to the League of Legends Season Ooh. 2 World Championships. Looking that and it. more. We're getting started with Week 6 Division 1. Don't go too far.